after seeing this movie, I so want to venture into the world of the software known as Oasis. But since I don't have any VR glasses of my own, I've decided to use the next best thing to view the majority of the pop culture references in this film. Wait for it. Oh yeah! <sighs> I so wish I had VR technology. What is up everybody? Random random man here. Okay, I can't see shit out of these things. Like, ugh. That's better. Anyway, what is up everybody? Random random man here bringing you my review for Ready Player One. Based on the novel of the same name, written by Ernest Klein, the plot takes place in 2045, where much of humanity has become involved in a real-world virtual reality software known as Oasis, where they work and play. A youngster, Wade Watts, played by Ty Sheridan, discovers hidden clues within a game that if he won, would grant him full ownership of Oasis, and he teams up with several allies to be able to find all these clues before Nolan Sorrento, played by Ben Mendelsohn, takes them for his own personal game with his own army of indentured players. Going into this movie, I had quite a bit of anticipation to see it. For one thing, it is directed by Steven Spielberg, one of my favorite film directors ever and one of the most influential ones in the realm of cinema's history. One of the big reasons that me and other people were anticipating this film was that Spielberg has gone back to bringing a lot of spectacle with the movies that have made him famous. I've enjoyed some of his more smaller and more politically inclined work, yet what a lot of people do enjoy seeing with Spielberg movies the most, as do I, is with seeing a lot of adventure and action shown off on screen. And with a subject matter such as this one involving the future VR and virtual world where people get engrossed in, it had me and a bunch of other people really anticipating it. Starting out with the cast and their performances, we have Ty Sheridan in the lead role of Wade Watts slash Percival, as he is known as within the world of the Oasis. Now, I've loved Ty Sheridan ever since I first saw him in his breakout role in Jeff Nichols' Mud, and what he does as Wade Watts in Ready Player One is give another plucky performance in how engrossed he is within the Oasis and trying to gain all three keys so that he is able to gain ownership of this virtual real world software type of land. It's something we mainly see through his eyes and this character wants to do everything it takes to discover all of the secret wonders in gaining a lot of this wealth. Other players in this movie that give as strong of performances like Ty Sheridan does include Olivia Cook as Artemis, the ally that Percival teams up with and also has a bit of a crush on in the world of the Oasis. I just loved her character. She was my personal favorite character of this movie. Her badass demeanor made her very likable and gutsy as the world of the Oasis was evolving with a lot of colorful characters such as herself. We have Ben Mendelsohn as Nolan Sorrento, the CEO of this big company that wants to take over control of the Oasis. And he is hamming it up and having a lot of fun chewing the scenery as this character. He is basically the go-to actor to play a really strong bad guy such as himself. Lena Waithe plays Ake, one of the good buddies of Percival within the Oasis. She was great. She had a lot of funny lines throughout this movie. TJ Miller, also another funny person in this film, plays a weapons and magic items dealer hired by Ben Mendelsohn's character to take out the main characters of this film. We also have Simon Penn as one of the co-creators of the Oasis and he has some nice screen time throughout this film and does play an integral role. Uh, we also have Mark Rylance as James Halliday, the now deceased co-creator of the Oasis who does leave in these keys for a bunch of game players to be able to find to take control of the Oasis. He is the heart and soul of this movie, just like he is in a bunch of other movies I've seen with him recently, such as Steven Spielberg's own The BFG and Christopher Nolan's Dunkirk. He is a 
class act, as I've mentioned with him before. We also have a lot of other players that do have some notable time to shine as well, like Philip Zhao, uh, Wen Morisaki, Ugh, I butchered that name, I apologize. There are just a lot of other people here that give some nice uh, characteristics about them that bring the cast full circle to being colorful as Spielberg does bring out with his actors in his films. The writing in this film, at surface level, brings us something that we've seen in the past with other properties, most notably to me, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, where a hopeful character hopes to achieve fame and glory within a place that is literally out of this world. Now, I've never read the book that this movie is based on, but the screenplay in this film was co-written by Ernest Cline, who is the author of the original source material, and Zach Penn, so it gave me solace that the original author did have have a lot of input in bringing his own story to the big screen. I did hear from a lot of other people though that this movie does deviate from the book in more ways than one, but in terms of how the story is presented to us, a lot of what is set up on a basic level did get me into what is shown. At the same time though, the movie didn't give us that much in the way of character development. In fact, this movie is thinly characterized even when it comes down to Wade Watts in the lead as the character we mainly see the world of the Oasis through. We really don't get a lot of motivation from our main heroes in order to care about them and even with Ben Mendelsohn's own evil CEO character, we've seen this kind of archetype done a lot in past movies or even other media where this big guy wants to take over uh, something for his own personal gain and already is stupid rich with his own nature. That kind of thing we have seen time and time again before. Those flaws with the writing didn't bother me too much though because what we are given at face value to get us into the world of the Oasis is just enough to get us suckered in to this expansive universe that is shown within virtual reality reality and let's get into the oasis itself and wow this movie is simply visually enamoring steven spielberg has a knack of making movies that get you into its world whether it is in a suburban neighborhood or even across many continents like within the indiana jones films with such a t that he has such a big sense of not just action when the action scenes do hit but adventure as we are venturing into worlds unknown or in this case virtual realms unknown this movie lives and breathes pop culture. It is the ultimate fanboy or fangirl movie. So many Easter eggs and references are shown off within this film that it's almost so much to take in and just how a lot of the visual effects are beautifully rendered. Some of them look dodgy at times, but I think they are intentionally done so to not always look the best because this is kind of modeled after what a video game would look like, as not everything looks completely realistic. The majority of this movie, to my surprise even, takes place within the Oasis, and after a while, you do get used to how this movie is emulating on a virtual world video game type of thing. As a video game, this would be a really fun one to play. I myself am a gamer. I'm not as much of a gamer as I used to have been about a decade ago but with all of that being said all of the little niches and subtleties that will get a lot of people ingrained within pop culture giddy with glee as with me as I've had a smile on my face often while watching this film in speaking of the experience while watching this film I saw this movie in IMAX 3d and yes 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 see this movie in 3D, IMAX 3D if you can, as there is simply no other best way to experience it other than to see it on the biggest screen possible and with the added aesthetic of 3D, as it does help enhance the experience of seeing all of the effects and fast-paced action rendered right in front of you to get you so immersed into the world of the Oasis. Not since Avatar a little over eight years ago, Damn, that was that long ago? <laughs> anyway, but not since Avatar within that time span have I been this invested in watching a movie in IMAX 3D. The movie is also so fast paced. I'm not just talking about how it is timed out with 
how long it runs and its pacing, but just within the action and the sense of adventure that this movie carries, also with scale, as I feel like that this is an infinitely growing universe that I so want to get into, as I've mentioned before. The action, it hits home, especially since, like I've said, I saw this movie in IMAX 3D, big screen, loud sound, all of it. Speaking of the sound too, the music in this film, Longtime collaborator John Williams did not compose the score for Steven Spielberg's film this time around, but the score here was composed by Alan Silvestri, who is known for some of his own iconic scores, like the one for Back to the Future. And some of those reprises are used throughout this film in adding on to the pop culture stuff within this film. But his own score does add to the whimsy and all-around wonder that makes you nostalgic for your own childhood or for other things that you remember from your youth that is shown off within this movie. Now, I wasn't around within the 1980s or when this movie first came out, but this movie and a bunch of other stuff, of course, are shown with visual and auditory cues. Mm, something that if you grew up in the 1970s and 1980s like my own dad did as he saw this movie with me will delight a lot of people. All of this comes together at a brisk running time of about a little under 2 hours and 20 minutes, which is lengthy, but I did not feel the running time in the slightest while watching this movie. I was having so much fun watching this movie that I forgot how long this movie was. That's the key word here, fun. This movie is supremely fun throughout, and again, it is all a testament to Steven Spielberg and what he brings to the table. and how he has made himself famous for bringing us the inner child adventuring into the worlds that he does show off within his films. Yes, at this movie's core, there's not much in the way of character development, and we've seen some stuff that has been shown in this movie before, and it also may be too much for some people to take in a lot of the pop culture references. In my opinion, this movie lives and breathes pop culture from its concept to its very execution that those going into this movie will have to be at least aware of whatever's being referenced to from the 1970s and beyond. One very awesome sequence in this movie specifically has to do with a movie from the 1980s and I will not give away what it is in case you don't already know, but yeah. Again, it's going to be so much to some people to not understand entirely what is being shown off here, but Spielberg and everyone else involved with this film clearly had such a loving nature for everything in between. It's also just flat out amazing how Spielberg and company were able to get the rights to various properties that were used within this movie as by the end this is just one of the most fun and memorable movie going experiences I've had in recent memory. Steven Spielberg has done it again and what he has given us out of his three most recent movies that I've seen in theaters Something that I want to go back and revisit, it shows off why we go to the movies in the first place for the spectacle that great filmmakers like Spielberg do show off. I definitely recommend Ready Player One. My final verdict for Ready Player One is four out of Five stars. Thank you all, as always, for watching. Be sure to like this video, comment on what you thought of Ready Player One. Social media links in the description. Subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll catch you on the next movie review.